Welcome to the Insight Cafe. I'm your host, Nikon Gormley. And today, 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 I have my man, Ahmed from Kazakhstan. So me and Ahmed go way back. We were classmates at American University in Washington, D.C. And since we've met that time, we have hung out in Singapore and Ahmed has been up to some amazing things. Currently, he is the founder and executive director of Sawat Strategy, which is a Singapore-based management consulting company. And he is changing the world through Sawat Education, which is an edutech company also based in Singapore. And I'm going to let you, Ahmed, tell us more about that. But before we start, I want you to tell us what's in the cup, because I think that's really interesting. <laughs> uh, first of all, Nikan, thank you so much for invitation. And I'm glad to be um, one of your guests. And that's that's true. Our friendship goes back to 2008. Seven. Yeah, seven to eight. Yeah, we go back. You and yeah. Me yeah. Eight, because I came to Washington DC in 2006. That's right. And even at that time, I was drinking this amazing drink. And as you can see, it's American University. So I hope those represent, also represent. Change. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm drinking horse milk. So it's real horse milk that powers me up. And some people say, where you got this old energy? I think horse milk plays an important role in that. So, so out of my own cultural curiosity, like, do you do you buy horse milk like you do cow's milk in the supermarket? Like, yes, yes, that's true. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, is, is that normal? Is that, I mean, is horse milk compared to cow's milk? How, how preferred is that in Kazakhstan? I mean, uh, there is a different um, applications, of course. Horse milk is very sour. Mm. Uh, and it's uh, good, of course, for your health. Uh, it's uh, boosts your immune system. Mm. Uh, cow milk, uh, I mean, horse milk, you can't put in a tea. You can't. You can't put it in a coffee. Mm. It's a uh, Stand alone, you you can drink it uh, only stand alone. Okay. Uh, so if you are not used to the sour, maybe at the beginning you will not like it. Yeah. Uh, but later on, once you understand this um, this taste, you will okay. like. But so, uh, cow milk, it's a cow milk. It's different. So now that we've satisf satisfied my cultural curiosity about about horse milk, please tell us about sour strategy and sour education. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's. Uh, uh, of course, more professional. Yeah. Uh, so, wait, so wait. What? horse milk is yeah. also professional. Just to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was saying that um, horse milk is good, but uh, running it doesn't help running the business. Okay. okay. So, Sawat strategy. Um, the history of it goes back in 2015, when I first incorporated it in Kazakhstan um, after quitting my job at the government sector. So at that time, I was supporting SMEs, foreign SMEs, to enter Central Asia. And uh, because I have been working with the many uh, foreign companies, um, attracting them to Kazakhstan, so I could understand what foreign companies would like and what kind of support they need. So everything started from that. And then I was thinking, okay, where the growth is going? Which markets are kind of fast growing? And after kind of um, analysis, I found it's Asia. Uh, it's not Europe. It's not United States. Uh, I found it's Asia. And in, in Asia, then I thought, okay, great. Um, which country I should go and see that opportunity? And I have already worked in Korea. I visited... Um, I visited uh, other Asian countries except Singapore. Um, and I knew that first of all, Singapore is a hub. Yeah, it's like a hub between West and Asia. And it's a, um, also like a London, like a New York, like Tokyo, Seoul, uh, kind of one of the financial centers. And uh, education is good. So I thought, I need to move to Singapore um, and establish a further uh, presence there. And then I was thinking, Nikon, what is the best way to understand the culture and get the networks? And I, I kind of uh, applied for MBA program. And then, uh, long story short, later on, I moved my company from Kazakhstan to Singapore. Uh, and I did it uh, last year, 2020, just before 
COVID-19 situation happened. Yeah. So I moved there and starting from uh, 2020, we provide services for foreign SMEs to enter Central Asia as before, but also Southeast Asia. So uh, I've been in Singapore since 2016. So I get the competencies, I got the network in this sector. And being an alumni of National University of Singapore MBA program, it, it of course helps me a lot. So uh, this is, as I call, very traditional business uh, consulting, management consulting. As I say, it's more MBA style, where we do market entry uh, strategies, industry analysis, partner due diligence, uh, business translation. And recently, we moved, uh, we introduced another service, moving all offline events to online events. So it's a kind of a very traditional business. Uh, so what education, it's, um, as you also put it out, I think it's indeed uh, quite um, transformative, uh, a new platform, EduTech, that I hope will disrupt the education sector uh, for the better. Um, what I, I'm envisioning with this platform growing, uh, it will democratize education process. I think this is a very good terminology to democratize, meaning that uh, right now with this platform that connects educators and learners, and you can by educators, I mean um, school teachers, university lecturers, and corporate trainers, coaches, also like you, for example, yeah? You are educators. And learners on the other side, it's schools, universities, and companies. They are looking for these educators. So I'm creating this marketplace where uh, education is done only online life. Uh, so I, I think you can ask me more questions on that, uh, but just uh, keeping in mind our short timing yeah i just want to make sure that uh, i cover whatever you are interested uh, to know so sawat education is also based in singapore it's um the same um word sawat uh wise sawat is a kazakh a word uh it means wise intellectual uh that's why uh kind of companies that i introduce have the sawat at the beginning okay that's really cool um, well, actually, the reason why I invited you on this podcast, because, you know, I'm really interested in disruption and people who are doing the disruption, because that's what my work is based on. My work is based on loving disruption, where I lovingly disrupt people's lives to help them do more cool stuff in the world. So with you, I'd love for you to expand, like, what inspired you to want to disrupt education and democratize education? Like, what did you see? as an opportunity or, or like why, what inspired you to disrupt education? Um, I, I think very good question. And it brings me back to 2016, um, even 2015, uh, when I started my company, one of my project was a uh, education project uh, where Korean company, one of the leading Korean edutech companies were planning to enter Kazakhstan. And we were supporting them as a consulting company. And through that project, I uh, kind of uh, went into nitty gritty of education system in developing world. And I saw some striking uh, moments uh, that as a, you know, I, I consider myself to be a middle class. I am not, uh, low class, I mean by, uh, by a salary. So I'm coming from a family of uh, educators. So my father, yeah. yes. But you're high class in my heart. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> uh, continue, so, sorry. Actually, actually, these days um, I see the class, the, how you divide middle class, uh, a low class, uh, not uh, low class, but it's more salary based, yes. Uh, if you have this seller, this is how you group uh, to get some uh, subsidies or uh, some advantage. But 
I think the, the best way to categorize people is by, oh, of course, knowledge, um, how much difference they bring to the world. Uh, but I think it's another conversation. Yeah. Let's go back to this 2015-2016 uh, when I was helping this Korean company. Um, so this Korean company, they produced, uh, they produced recordings. It's called uh, digital content for schools uh, from grade one to grade nine in uh, science. Uh, actually, they built the whole digital content program uh, for Korean schools. Uh, it's, like a, it's like a supplementary material for school teachers to use in their classes. And um, it, why it's a good supplementary material? Because lesson by lesson, it says, okay, now it's a mathematics grade three uh, September 5th, and it says, okay, September 5th, press this button, then you'll say, okay, this is a topic, this is a video material that is helpful for kids, this is a test that they need to, this is a reading material, so it's a, it's like a customized digital content, and if, if teacher is not uh, highly qualified, yeah, to teach this uh, subject, with this supplemental material, they empower themselves. So this is just to make more engaging lessons. So what I noticed in many, uh, let me talk about Kazakhstan, yeah? And uh, maybe the situation a little bit changed, a little bit. I don't think it's changed a lot. In Kazakhstan, we have 7,300 uh, 7, around. Uh, I don't want to be statistically, you know, like somebody will, oh, it's not 7,300, 7,350. I'm not sure about it, yeah? So it's 7,300 public schools. And you can, half of them, half of them, meaning um, 3,600, it's called incomplete schools. Nika, I just want you to understand, half of public schools are called incomplete schools. And the definition of incomplete school, uh, Nika, let me explain you. It's uh, a class of 30 students, okay? A class of 30 students. Uh, 10 students are for grade five, from grade five. 10 students. 10 students from grade six. And 10 students from grade seven. And they're sitting in one classroom, okay? And for example, a subject called mathematics. Yeah. So it means that the teacher within this 45 minutes, uh, it's like a class hour, yeah? In 45 minutes, she should explain mathematics to grade five, according to their curriculum, grade six, according to their curriculum, and grade seven, according to their curriculum. So actually it means per each grade, she can spend maximum 10 minutes out of 45, because then she also needs to answer some questions, correct? So this is, I called infrastructure problem, correct? Because not enough schools or not enough teachers, yeah, or not enough uh, students or something. So I, I called infrastructure problem. It's okay. Maybe it's, um, it's a, we can solve it by uh, bumping money, correct? We can bump the money, build more schools, maybe put some digital stuff, uh, I don't know. However, the, another bigger problem, uh, Nikon, in this situation, that the teacher of mathematics, she doesn't know mathematics. This is a big problem. So teacher doesn't know the subject. And then you will ask me why then she became a teacher or uh, why um, uh, she can teach. It's because in that remote area, or for example, village, uh, they couldn't find better one. They couldn't find better one. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say that it's um, uh, all, all schools doesn't have this qualified teachers, but I would say a significant amount. Okay, I would like to be politically correct because I'm pretty sure some of the uh, uh, people will watch our uh, interview and they can uh, tell us, but significant amount doesn't have enough qu 
quality's competence to teach mathematics. And it means it's a disaster, Nick, and it means disaster. It means we're losing that generation who wanted to learn but couldn't learn. So uh, as part of the United Nations Development Goals, every child has right for education, correct? Education is called education for all. So uh, when I saw this, I actually was uh, stretching my head and say, okay, this digital content can help. That's why I was doing this product because we wanted to provide this digital content from Korean uh, company to these teachers. So at least they can look at this material and say, okay, this is uh, material. So we wanted to empower this. So at that time I thought, yeah, this is a good uh, solution. And I also analyzed other developing world. It happens the same in Indonesia. It happened the same in Philippines. It happens the same in Africa. The same problem in India, in Brazil, it happens because of the uh, first infrastructure problem. Second, it's a, a content problem, uh, not enough teachers. Uh, so this digital content is one of the solution. That's why Coursera Udemy is uh, building their power there, correct? because they can provide these uh, recordings of great professors teaching some subjects. Yep. But then with pandemia, uh, so actually this is answering a question, uh, Nika, why I moved to this ed edutech startup? Because I see that issue and I was stretching my head during all of these years and um, I was also, as part of my consulting, we're doing several education pro, uh, uh, projects where I observed this issue coming and coming. Uh, and I think when, and myself, I'm educator. I'm also teaching online live at university in Kazakhstan. Yeah, I'm teaching online live. And uh, do you remember, I also invited you to some of the... Yes, I was a guest lecturer at Kazu University. Very proud <laughs> of myself. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, do you remember what kind of uh, feedback I have received from students? Uh, so uh, I really... I'll let you tell. If I say it, I sound like I'm tooting my own horn. Like, yeah. but, but I remember it being very good. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, uh, let me share later. So um, when pandemia started mm. in one day, let me just talk about uh, maybe Kazakhstan because it's uh, close mm. and easy for me to describe, yeah, because I'm original from Kazakhstan. In one day, I still remember March 16th, 2020, government announced all schools and universities must go online. Mm. So it means that nobody can come to school, arrange uh, online live, Zoom, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Teams, anything else but organize this uh, live learning. Uh, so at that situation, I thought, aha, uh -huh, Nikon, we have a solution. If right now everything is online and we don't have enough teachers and uh, government is kind of promoting this, um, you know, uh, high quality internet in remote areas, then I can connect those teachers from, uh, I would say maybe from developed world, yes, who has some time or capacity to teach online live at areas where there is not enough teachers. So, but then it's online live. It's uh, it's similar what we are doing right now. It's not recording. It's online live, so students can ask questions in real time. So they're more engaged. This is very important, especially at the school level and uh, more important, of course, uh, later in university level, when it's live and engaging. Engagement is uh, another important uh, terminology in education, engagement level, how students are engaged in the process. So, uh, when it uh, went online and I started, to, okay, right away in March, I started to think about it. It's great time to move forward with this idea. 
So I started to find developers um, in, in, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in India, in Kazakhstan, even in Russia. Uh, so long story short, first I onboarded NUS uh, um, students from uh, Department of Computer Science, uh, Industrial Engineering, uh, MBA students to help to pivot the business model uh, because venture capital, if you want to receive funds, you need to show where the money coming from. I would love to do it for free, you know, apply for Bill and Gates Foundation and uh, get it done and provide it for everyone for free, but it's not sustainable. So I started stretching my head how to make money from it so that venture capital, this, as I would say, um, institutions come on board and um, invest. So created that created a team uh, of course not so uh, not so easy and straightforward uh, so there were ups and downs of course but the end result it's live right now sawa.education can be used uh, so everybody who is interested to teach online live academic courses uh, I forgot to mention another thing it's academic courses meaning that whatever grade you are Putin as educator goes to students' transcript. Of course, it's different for companies. For companies, more trainings, yes? Like a five-day training, one-month training, uh, coaching, it's different. But when we talk about schools and universities, we're talking about academic courses. It's not enrichment. It's not tutoring. It's the real academic courses. So um, I encourage anyone who wants to teach or has uh, already experience to teach, sign up. And then uh, I'm piloting in Kazakhstan. So I onboard in schools, universities here and they can find you and maybe uh, some deals can be, uh, can be created. Nikon, I've been talking for a while. Did I answer your question? Absolutely not. No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no you... I think you made a lot of really interesting points. I wonder, I wonder where you see education going forward to you. Uh, I mean, I'm, uh, um, like, do you think, do you think after the pandemic we'll go back to the way it was or do you think no. education has fundamentally changed? Uh, yeah. Education fundamentally changed and we, it was already evolving because, um, first of all, the curricula have been changing towards more, uh, bringing soft skills learning not only hard skills but also soft skills so we were experiencing curricular change uh so it was changing more to soft skills so this one direction of course yeah that, that was happening but when everything went online and it was live wait a minute uh teachers and uh, students specifically at university level I found, uh huh, actually, uh, it's working. It's working. Uh, we are actually saving more time. We have access to like guest speakers like Nikon, for example, yeah, that we didn't have time before or we didn't have opportunity. Correct. Uh, so then they say, okay, and then university cannot charge as much as they charged before because right now, they're doing everything online. They don't need to go to facilities. So it, of course, uh, universities had to, okay, what shall we do to, uh, to make sure that uh, students are paying uh, and how to create that value? Uh, so what does it mean? It means that definitely education will not return to the same uh, structure. What I mean by that, of course, even though I'm proponent for online life and I see the benefits, yeah, there are some limitations. First limitation, of course, you can't do online life for uh, primary school. Why? Because children needs this uh, active participation in the class, so socialization. So um, this online life education, uh, I would suppose, will be from secondary school from later secondary school so from grade seven and upwards and if not fully online but it's going to be hybrid 
hybrid meaning uh, some classes are offline, but some classes will be online. And the percentage will increase year by year. That's what I want to make sure that it increase year by year. Uh, once we have such a uh, uh, kind of um, uh, everywhere we can use uh, soon, I, I believe, VR, virtual reality and augmented reality. With these technologies and with 5G internet speed, then that will be booming. Online life will be booming because then it will be the same as Nick and you are sitting here and I can see you like this, like your hologram. And we're discussing like this. And another uh, big, um, uh, big developing technology is uh, of course screens or uh, probably the material will something different that our eyes will not be tiring as much as right now. So we can actually uh, spend a lot of time online and our eyes will not be hurting. Because right now it's a limitation. And I'm pretty sure within 10 years, we'll forget about these laptops. Like it's, it's going to be weird. Like uh, 10 years ago, there was Motorola or something with a, with a <laughs> how do you call it? With, a, with the buttons to, to stop. So that's I also think about the technologies and all of that means that there will be demand for online life booming. And I want to be early adapting in this situation because as platforms as we have created for online life academic courses, I can count by hands. One is in Canada, another is in Africa. Yes, Indonesian company Ron Guru is kind of developing too this, but uh, Coursera them they try, but I understand for them it's hard. For big companies, it's really hard because they like whales and change their business model. It's kind of hard. It's not easy. We are starting from very unique uh, stage based in Singapore. We have access to a lot of funds. We have access to talents. Uh, we have access to scale up. And uh, we're starting from scratch. So uh, that's why I think I can implement all of that. I wonder how. So that's really cool. For, um, so what I heard in that was, it seems to me like education is on a natural process of evolution and disruption uh -huh. by, uh -huh. by nature of necessity. And like given the pandemic and technology, that's cool to see that change is inevitable. And what I also see is how it's one of those things too, where like we're, I think habitually we fear change and we resist against change. And what I heard from you is, how you don't need to like if you can learn to surf with change surf the waves of change you'll you'll create new things and you'll see new things yes so i want to talk a little bit more about you so in your creating of these two businesses like i wonder what you've learned about yourself i am uh um i found myself uh um uh, I think the good comparison will be in 2010, I, uh, I came to United States. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I graduated 2009, 2010, I came to United States and uh, long story short, I, uh, I went to Harvard University and I uh, was at the Bill Gates talk mm -hmm. at, this, uh, at the theater in Harvard. Um, so uh, at that time I was... Um, in the queue with one uh, Harvard student, he's, he's a Spanish, I still remember. And we were sitting together and after Bill Gates gave a talk, uh, you know, there's a Q and A. And I asked, um, I forgot his name. I said, shall I ask him a question whether uh, he wanna, he can give me a grant to study at Harvard University? He said, it's embarrassing. Like, uh, why, why you'll do that? Uh, uh, I said, but uh, why not? I mean, this is a Q and A, Q &A. you yeah. can ask anything correct it's yeah. anything and if i can make it uh kind of uh, uh relevant to the talk and the, it was relevant because you know bill gates he was talking about bill gates foundation he was mm -hmm. sharing about support for health mm -hmm. support for developing world and support for education mm -hmm. so i thought i was coming from kazakhstan developing world education i love education so okay yeah fair, fair enough like those are those are valid points to ask yeah, bill gates <laughs> to pay for your education at harvard yeah. 
not. Yeah. And and then he said, "Are you really want to ask question?" I said, "Yeah, why not?" Then if you go and ask, uh, it means you have three balls instead of two balls. You know, <laughs> he was just joking like that. And I went to ask. I went to ask, <laughs> and, and then he said, "Oh my god." Uh, so, but I think it uh, talks about my character that. Uh, um, I kind of risk taker, but uh, rationalized risk taker. I mean, uh, maybe intuition helps me, but also analytical uh, thinking uh, where I can connect the dots and... Um, Wait, so what did Bill Gates say? He said, apply. Did you apply? I, I have uh, applied, uh, but I think I didn't get. Okay. Well, at least you tried, and you learned yeah, that you have three balls said, instead of two. Said, Please. Yeah, he said, apply. Uh, there is a process uh, to apply. <laughs> so I'm curious, like, from that until now, like, how have you, like, how do you think you've changed? Like, what do you think, um, how has owning an international business developed or changed you the way you see the world? Mm, I see that uh, even though we're young, uh, we can... Uh, influence the change. So if before we were just looking, oh, these guys, they're building that, oh, can I do it? Can I do it? Uh, oh, uh, So they had a lot more thinking about creating business and creating change. And now you, now you said you can do it yourself. Yes, yes. And, and now um, you can drive it, yes. And you are uh, at the same uh, kind of cell, yeah. And you know that, it all depends on you. Mm. It all depends on your drive, on your energy, uh, on your leadership style, yeah, how you create a team, how you envision uh, further development. And you know, it's hard. It's easier to work at uh, corporate mm. and just follow whatever is there. Mm. Uh, and from nine to six, you do your best, you go career. Uh, but then you you can only realize your potential within this organization. Mm. Expand on uh, that. What do, you, what do you mean you can only realize your potential in this organization? I mean, because uh, you're working for someone. Mm. You're working for someone and it already limits your potential. That's what I want to say. Uh, because you can only check your potential if you leave organization and start from your own and see what you can build from scratch. I think, I think what you're talking about is um, maybe expand your thinking. Like to me, I think, I think if you thought that your potential was, was based on where you were working, then yeah, it would, it would look limited. Right. But to me, I think like how, I think if you really tap into your potential, you could see that it's, to me at least, the way it looks like to me, it's, it's unlimited. So even if you do work for someone, you can still expand your potential. But I understand that given the premise of the pressures of, of like working and corporate, like it might, that might be a little bit difficult, but I get it. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. You, you put yourself in the framework. Mm. And, uh, and of course we can um, kind of justify, we say, oh, during my free time, I can do whatever I want. Uh, but then tomorrow your boss calls you at 9.30, you say, oh yes, here we go, I'm here. So what was that like for you to jump from corporate to owning your own business? What, what, was, what did you experience? Or I mean, what, what did you experience in terms of the way you thought about work and your potential? Um, I mean, I've been working in Singapore, uh, I would say in um, one of the, best uh, MNCs, especially executive search in human development. Yes, uh, I have a high respect. I learned a lot. Uh, but for me personally, the limitation, as I said, was uh, this framework that um, I have to be within this. Mm. So I can't go back and forth. Mm. Uh, even though it's a highly paid, um, it's a great team. Everything was great. But I think this um, um, framework was kind of uh, hard uh, 
for me and when i envision oh i'm 55 years old and i'm still kind of in this start then mm. i'm losing my energy yes losing energy no what i mean what i mean we are right now i'm 33 and yeah. i know that i can be 33 only one year mm. i cannot be 33 for two years and i also understand that um as a human body uh our energy uh, I mean, it's good if we can keep the same and uh, up. The solution but... to that, Ahmed, is, is horse milk. Like, that's the obvious solution. <laughs> that's why you can be 33 forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, and then I said, you need to go, because I already run my business. Yeah. But here's the different setting. It's a highly competitive in market, Singapore. Mm. I mean, there are so many management consulting companies. Mm. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're, smarter people than me yeah but uh standing uh, working uh together with them uh kind of um, creating these solutions uh finding opportunities uh you know just the, i can compare it um when you are drawing a, a painting mm. yes you can draw a painting uh, together with teacher, correct? Teacher can tell you, oh, do this, uh, it's better. So, and then what I want to say, you are you are executing vision of your teacher. Whether you want it or you don't, because you are looking at her, at your teacher's suggestions. Yeah, because you're learning. Um, when you're running your own business, you have a uh, you have a paper, and you are drawing yourself. You are drawing based on your previous experience. Maybe some teacher would give you it's good, but then you can you know if you're creative enough, you can create something unbelievable that your teacher wouldn't see. And you would also not see unless you sit down and paint that. And I just compare uh, this with a drawing that um, you can do it when you are only free. You uh, understand yourself better. And I, I see where you're coming from as a coach, Nikon, that uh, you can find internal power. I am, I am confident about that. You can find it within the organization if you're a part of corporate. But what I want to say, truly you can find it if you go out and start something from your volunteering or NGO or something that uh, uh, you are wholly responsible for yourself and trying to build it to um, bigger, bigger. I'm still at my starting journey. Maybe if you ask me after five years, I can be bankrupt. Uh, I, I don't know. Of course, I don't want to say that, but we you never know. not be bankrupt in five years. <laughs> 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 I would be upset. <laughs> no, I think it's yeah. uh, probably not going to happen. Um, uh, but uh, you just do your best at this mm. particular time. All right. So we're coming up, we're coming up on time, and I want to respect your time. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, what would you want to give to entrepreneurs or business owners or leaders who are looking to create an impact with their work? Mm. What would you, what insights would you give, or what words would you give as a gift? Um, those who are starting the businesses and do impact, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, here, here I think, uh, I mean, as I shared, for example, Sawat Education didn't come that somebody told me to create this company, correct? Mm. Well, or, I did, obviously, in Singapore. It was all my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was over, it was over Duck Noodle. <laughs> yeah, 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 Duck Noodle. You recommended no. to join Google. <laughs> no, I told you to join YouTube. I remember in your life. If you want to create impact, uh, definitely, uh, if I just try to um, look at my side and how I'm creating impact, it's um, 
really care about particular issue and uh, try to solve it in a very unconventional ways. Mm. And then impact will be created. Mm. Uh, you don't know what kind of impact. Maybe it's disruptive. Maybe it's um, um, people will not understand and it's bad, but it's still impact, even though uh, you're scared it will be bad, but even though it's going to be bad, but by bad, I mean, um, it didn't go as you wished. Mm. And it can happen. Uh, but it's also learning. It's also learning for society that this business model doesn't work. Mm. Then, uh, or maybe you didn't do something, uh, all whatever you can do. Maybe this journey, it created impact for others and you can be uh, connected with other partners and something else will come. Right. So uh, it's not like one way. As long as you really care about this issue and you really put your heart into it, uh, and sometimes it means uh, sacrifice of your time, uh, sometimes it means uh, less uh, sleeping times, uh, mm -hmm. it's something that bothers you all the time. Yeah. So uh, when I was creating this Sawat education, everyone was saying uh, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Everybody was saying it's not going to work. Uh, it's a, it's a wrong business model. You will not find developers. Uh, so a lot of no, no, no's, but you know, I kind of was proceeding, proceeding, uh, with the limited mm. funds. I said, I can do it. That's important. Let mm. me do it. That's important. And then, you know, after these challenges, then when I think, uh, people will say, this guy, he's just continuing doing. Mm. Uh, let let us help him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we feel sorry for him. Like let us help you. <laughs> and he's got horse milk, so obviously we need to help him. <laughs> so I think at that time, and then we we're building together. Then it's aha. Uh -huh. Then but this uh, these steps, the only way you can go through it if you're mm. quite sure about the issue, you are. Uh, caring about the issue and you can go through it. Um, I know it's a very uh, maybe simple, uh, everybody understands it, but don't, not everybody can feel it. It's mm. a different understanding and feeling it's a different way. Yeah? Especially, for example, I'm married. Yeah, I have two mm. kids. And when I uh, take money from my one business and put into another and uh, my family doesn't receive some of the funds, coming through these two mm -hmm. businesses, yeah? Because it just goes from one to another. My wife says, oh, what is going on? What is going on here? <laughs> uh, I'm saying, uh, we are helping uh, for the future mm -hmm. generation. I said, mm -hmm. ah, okay, okay, okay. But it means some- uh, your, some. Your wife is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out yeah. to Ahmed's wife. You're amazing. And your kids are amazing too. Yeah, thank you. And. Uh, the last thing, um, Nikon, uh, when I look at it, you, uh, the impact can be created only with positive mindset, growth mindset. Uh, otherwise, uh, impact, it means you're going through the ways unconventional. Once again, it's unconventional. You, uh, I, I just feel you cannot create impact if it is already known road. It's not impact. It's just, it's just going with a with a with a flow. Mm. But impact, um, it's where you try to find different ways uh, and mm. try to do with okay. the care. That's cool. Thank you for sharing. So, lastly, let us know where we can find you. Where we can, um, if you're an educator, if you're a coach, consultant, where can we join Savat Education? Hey. And um, where can we find you? Where we can get in touch with you? Let us know. Yeah. Uh, how can I get uh, let you know? Oh, well, just tell us here, and then I'll also put um, your information in the in the links below. I see. I see. Thank you. So actually, it's quite easy. Sawat dot education. Uh, we are not using dot com or something. It's just sawat dot education. That's it. Cool. So so easy. I made it as simple as possible. Maybe in the future we'll do rebranding. 
but please bear with me. Uh, I just thought it's a cool name, Sawad.education. Uh, not everybody agrees. So if you are educator, um, uh, meaning like a school teacher, university lecturer, or corporate trainer, including coach, you can go there, create your account as educator, uh, fill up your profile, please. Then we will approve your profile just to make sure that you're a real person. You're not a, a spam so that uh, we keep our platform clean. And then please create a course that you can teach, put the price tag that you wanna receive, share which country you wanna teach, share what is your uh, preference. Is it a company? Is it a university or school? And share your av available times when you would like to teach. Share description of your course. Uh, and that's it. And also don't forget to put your bank account so we can pay you once we get paid by uh, learners. Okay, that's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing. I think that'll be really helpful and open a lot of doors to a lot of great educators to connect with students all around the world. Thanks to you. And lastly, before we go, I'm gonna let everybody know that my man Ahmed is a, a wonderful chess teacher, as you can see. Oh. He okay. has yeah. his own Queen's Gambit happening right there in the background. <laughs> yeah, do you remember Queen's Gambit? It starts G4, G5, he, then yeah. C4. That's what's amazing, Netflix. Uh, and I felt. Did you, did you like it? Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I liked yeah. it because it also reminded me of some of my uh, chess tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's true. I am uh, also, yeah, I'm teaching chess online for kids uh, during my spare time. Yeah, and he's an amazing teacher. I highly recommend him. If you want your children to learn about, if you want your children to learn chess directly from the executive director and founder of Savat Education, this is the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. All right, yeah. Ahmed, I really appreciate your time and your energy and your impact. I think you are going to do amazing things for this planet in terms of education. I'm so proud that and grateful that we're friends and hopefully... I will see you either in Kazakhstan, in Thailand, or Singapore. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, uh, Nikan, for having me. I really appreciate, especially uh, when you have all the amazing speakers to be on your podcast, but I was part of it, so I really appreciate. And uh, I hope that uh, you will see more viewers on your uh, Inside Cafe. And I know that you do a lot of other great stuff and i'm following on on your facebook and other channels and i see how you progress i think within the last two years uh oh, that, that means a lot that, that really means a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> i remember started this conversation yeah 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 so uh, i see the progress from your side and i'm super happy and i hope that we'll have this uh, au reunion of asia and um yeah, crazy. Over, over a glass of horse milk. That's horse the, milk. That's the only Joe. way I'm doing it. <laughs> American University. <laughs> American University. All right, my friend. I will see you later. Bye bye. Hugs. Bye bye. <laughs>